located in the city of Jerusalem, in the heart of the old city, is Zedekiah's cave. Before we visit the cave itself, let's just go 150 feet to the west, where we have Damascus Gate, one of the eight gates that lead into the old city of Jerusalem, and really by far the most beautiful. There's some antiquity here as well that dates back prior to the Turkish Empire who built the old city walls about 500 years ago. And that antiquity dates back to Hadrian, the emperor of Rome who destroys Jerusalem during the Bar Kokhba revolt. However, during that time, there weren't walls all around the old city. When the Turks come here, roughly about 1200 years later, they are going to elong the center part of the gate of Hadrian and of course build the walls of the old city. Well, let's head now to Zedekiah's cave and discover what lies below the old city. Zedekiah's cave is a man-made cave that's dug out under the old city. It was originally a quarry. The cave itself was rediscovered in the late 19th century after it had been closed off by the Turkish Empire, who were fearful that invaders would enter the cave, go under the old city, and then up into the city in order to defeat it. Let's walk a little bit deeper into the cave and talk a little bit about its history. Charles Warren, one of the modern explorers here, named this cave Solomon's Quarry, believing that this was the quarry that Solomon chiseled out rock in order to build the first temple. The limestone of Jerusalem has various levels of quality. The highest quality is known as queenstone. This is a limestone that when you chisel out is relatively soft. However, when it's exposed to the elements, it becomes harder and harder and harder as time goes by. There was a vein of this queenstone that slanted down. That's why we're going down into the cave and then opened up at the end. This was one of the main quarries that King Herod used to build the second temple and the western wall that so many of us visit while in Jerusalem. When scientists tested the quality of the stones of the western wall, they matched up almost identical to the stones that are found here in this quarry. In fact, when you look at the ceiling, you can still see the chisel marks from the masons who quarried out these stones to build the Temple Mount during Herod's time. Let's go down a little bit deeper and visit one of the halls that's named after the Freemasons and learn about their connection with this cave. So the hall we're in right now, known as the Freemasons Hall, named also by Charles Warren, who named the entire system Solomon's Quarry, because Charles Warren himself was a Freemason. But we haven't delved into the name Zedekiah. Who was he and why is this cave known after him? Let's go find out a little bit deeper into the cave. Zedekiah was the last king of Judah before it fell to the Babylonians. And it says in the Tanakh, in the Bible, that he escaped out of the city to the Judean desert. Many people believe that it was through here that Zedekiah and his entourage fled. However, some Babylonian soldiers who were chasing a wild gazelle saw Zedekiah and his entourage leave the cave system near the city of Jericho captured him, killed his sons right in front of his own eyes, and then gouged out his eyes so that the last thing he ever saw was his sons being murdered in front of him. Legend tells us that the spring behind me is caused by the tears that were shed by Zedekiah over the death of his sons and the loss of his kingdom. Thank you for watching today as we discovered the cavern under the old city known as Zedekiah's Cave. Next time you visit Jerusalem, make sure to exit Damascus Gate and visit the Cave of Zedekiah. <laughs>